Hey YouTube, this is Low Energy Steve here, and today we are going to share something with y'all. We're usually hesitant to share a few of our devices because honestly, even though it's probably legal, I don't want to get any heat for it. But today we have no problem sharing this with you. So this here is my design for a 3D printed, fully 3D printed rocket motor. We've already tested this, it produced really good thrust. Probably, I didn't weigh it on a scale, but it looks to be about 25 pounds of thrust based on the amount of propellant it consumed, 80 grams of propellant over one second, and the throat diameter. Anyway, so I've been wanting to fly this rocket after I designed it, and I have no problem sharing a model rocket with all of you. The, the uh, design changes I've made since I printed the rocket was we have a tiny little hole here that is for our delay portion of our uh, fuel grain. And then we have a small pocket which gets a cap. This cap is for black powder, and that black powder is so that we can pop the ejection charge when the rocket is at apogee. This is very important because we basically don't want our rocket coming in ballistically, posing a hazard to people or persons on the ground. We want to pop that nose cone off, ruin the aerodynamics of the rocket, and have it fall down sideways with a ribbon, streamer, parachute. Anyway, since we've explained all that, let's get started. So what we'll be using today is potassium nitrate, sorbitol powder, and ground up tires. This can be purchased on Amazon as well as the sorbitol, and I don't remember, but this can be purchased at Home Depot under the name Stump Remover. Make sure it is potassium nitrate. So with those three ingredients and one of our printed rocket kits, that is all you need to make a flight. Okay, first we're going to zero out our scale. Oops. There, zero grams with our impeccably clean mixing container. Anyway, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get the sorbitol melted. Sorbitol is a lot like sugar, except for it melts at a very low temperature. I don't recall what that temperature is, but um, this stuff casts way better than rock candy, and I am making a mess. So I want to have roughly... I want to have roughly 30 grams of sorbitol. Put that on the scale. We are very scientific here. A few moments later. There we go. We got 30 grams of sorbitol. Now, normally I would say never, ever, ever cook rocket candy fuel on a gas stove. However, the way that we're going to be doing this with sorbitol, it's actually completely safe. The reason is we're only melting the sorbitol. We won't be melting any other ingredients. We won't have any mixed ingredients over an open flame. So we have our 30 grams of sorbitol. Next, we're going to add 60 grams of potassium nitrate. Take a look at that. Low deep. Sixty grams. Okay, we're not adding the potassium nitrate into the sorbitol. If we melt this, we're going to get like a consistency of heavy whipping cream, and that's what the sorbitol looks like when it's fully melted. Just keep that on low heat for a second. Now we have ninety grams of propellant. I'm also just going to add ten grams of ground rubber. This is totally optional. I'm really not sure what it does, but it seems to have a more energetic burn. I'm not a chemist, but we're just going to stick it in there anyway. There. Okay. 
So back to our sorb doll. Once we get this fully melted, once again, consistency of heavy cream. There we go. Just one little nugget left. Perfect. All right. We're gonna turn off our flame. And we're gonna add our fuel to our oxidizer, which looks like something else. <laughs> so once again, no flames during this part. We're gonna stir until everything is like a thick paste. Everything needs to get nice and wet. You can pause and come back when I'm fully stirred. Okay, so now we have our fuel to a consistent texture all throughout, meaning that all of our ingredients are fully blended. We're gonna let this sit and cool. It's not super hot, you can touch it and not melt your skin off, unlike our candy, but we wanna get it down to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. That'll make it ideal for pressing into the motor tube. You can tell me. Go. Okay, so we've let our rocket fuel sit for approximately 10 minutes. And as we can see, okay, it's just warm. It's kind of like soft Play Doh. Really soft Play Doh. So, what we want to do is we want to get it to roughly our 24 millimeter inside diameter to start. We're going to roll our fuel which is not hot, you can set it on your wrist, it doesn't scald, which is like soft Play-Doh. I'm gonna roll this to approximately the inside diameter of the case, just to start it. And we're gonna drop it, go narrow that up a little bit. Drop it in like so. This is the easiest rocket fuel ever to work with. So with regular sugar candy, um, it pours like taffy and it turns really hard when it's room temperature. This does too, but you have so much time to work with it. So we're gonna put that in there. I'm gonna press it down. Try to make sure we have no air pockets because it's very important for the fuel grain to bond with the case. Any sort of air pockets can create pressure spikes in the motor, which could pop it. So we've got our soft taffy fuel grain pushed in. We're gonna finish it off with another segment. Here, honey, poke it with your finger. Mm -hmm. Nice and soft. Just a little sticky, though. Okay, so once we've got our fuel grain fully compressed and case bound, bonded, I'm going to take our coring tool. Inside here, there's a little roof which should center the coring tool. And this is hollow. You probably should have went all the way through. That is bit of a oversight on my behalf. I'm going to push this in all the way to the bottom. Okay, so we're going to remove our coring tool out with a twist. There we go. So we have our cord fuel grain. All right, it is a little over full. We're going to have to scrape some off the top. So next thing we're going to do we're gonna get a tiny amount of black powder substitute. This is very important. Do not exceed seven grams. Of course, this is not even registering as a gram. It's a very, very small amount. This is all that's needed to blow the nose cone off and need a better scale. However, we're gonna take this. This is gonna serve as our delay green for now. It's a piece of firework fuse. I'm gonna stick it in the small hole here. And we are going to slam in some our candy fuel around it. So we want to seal 
off that opening. And this stuff dries like concrete. On top of that, we're gonna put our very small amount of black powder. Substitute, that's probably plenty. So the reason why we don't want to exceed seven grams is because the ATF would define any rocket that carries a charge of more than seven grams as a destructive device. We're not trying to make those, we're trying to make a metal rocket. Then we're gonna cap off our recovery charge. And we're done. We have some excess fuel. We can burn this for a propellant characterization or whatever. But we're gonna go ahead and cap this with a nozzle. Over here we have our 100% infill ABS nozzle, and that's not me flipping everyone off, I swear. Screw it on. Nice and tight. That gap is nice and closed. Everything is really sealed. Now we just assemble. The rocket motor goes into the fins. It's going to stop right here at the nozzle. It's going to have to push it past the gap, or the little bit of flashing. There. Rocket motor is now flush with the fins. And you can see our ejection charge here on the top. Now we're going to add our center section. There. It's fully seated. It does require some force. Last is our nose cone. It is a little bit of a tight fit initially, but if you just work it around, it pops out pretty easily. Right. So this is our completed rocket. All we have to do now is put in a fuse, which you can actually use. It's kind of ghetto, but you just want to make it fly and test it out. Small section of your rocket fuel before it gets hard like concrete. You can mold in a little fuse, run it up the back, and try to stick it to the side there a little bit. Whatever, it's gonna wanna fall out, but that's fine. Anyway, this is what we're gonna use to light our rocket. I'm gonna put a little hook in it so it stays. And this is because primarily I am lazy. There we go. Now it doesn't fall out. And we're done. We're ready to test fire. Everybody else agrees Unspoken words will fade